as salty, spicy, sweet, fluffy, crunchy, all of the above. This rice is a game changer. Hey everyone, today I will be making spicy Thai basil chicken along with coconut rice. To spice up this dish, I'll be using a combination of serrano and habanero peppers. To balance out that spice, I will be including coconut rice to see how its sweetness pairs with the spiciness. Spicy Thai basil chicken is my go-to dish whenever I have ground chicken to use, but this will be my very first time trying it with sweet coconut rice. Before we get started on cooking this, we need to do some prep work, and that includes preparing the chicken, slicing the aromatics, slicing the basil leaves, and making the sauce. First, I'll prepare the sauce that will be used later when cooking the chicken. Since it involves precise measurements for each ingredient, it's best for me to get it done now so it's ready to pour when needed later on. Now that the sauce is done, let's work on the aromatics. The basil leaves definitely smell the best, especially when they're fresh. It's satisfying getting to slice them into ribbon-like strips using the chiffonade technique. This ensures that the basil's flavor is evenly distributed throughout the dish, making sure each bite has that distinct taste of basil, while also improving the presentation of the dish. Next up is the chicken. I got whole chicken thighs here and I'm gonna slice this in small pieces and then I'm gonna pop it in this food processor. I usually make ground chicken at home by taking my chicken thighs and either running it through a food processor or chopping it by hand with a trusty cleaver. Using either method makes me feel like I've truly earned the meal I'll be enjoying later on. All right, chicken is done. Now it's onto the coconut rice. First, I'm going to rinse the rice repeatedly and wash the starch off. Now you might wonder, is washing the rice really necessary? Generally, the answer isn't always straightforward. Some say yes, and some say no. Some say it depends on the type of rice. But in this case, when making coconut rice, Washing the rice is important for several reasons. Doing so helps remove excess starch, which can cause the rice to become overly sticky when cooked. Once the starch is rinsed away, the grains remain separate and fluffy, giving the rice a better texture. By removing excess starch, the rice is now able to fully absorb the coconut milk, making the coconut rice even more flavorful. Also, washing ensures a more even cooking process so that each grain cooks through perfectly without being too soft on the outside or undercooked on the inside. Maybe a couple more. I feel like that's pretty clear. Tough to see it on camera, but I can see the rice right through the water. See? We are good to go on this. So is washing rice before cooking it actually necessary? In this case, yes. It's definitely essential when making coconut rice as a side. And shake it up, because I forgot to do so.
While the rice is cooking, I'm getting the skillet ready with some warm oil and adding in the ground chicken. Once the chicken has browned slightly, I'll make a well in the center and add in all that sliced aromatics I prepared earlier. It's important not to fully cook the chicken before adding in the aromatics, since it will continue to cook after the rest of the ingredients are added. Once the onions and peppers have softened, I'll pour in the sauce and stir it until it thickens slightly. When it does so, I'll turn off the heat and fold in the thinly sliced basil. Just look at how good that looks. That is salty, spicy, sweet, fluffy, crunchy, all of the above. Good combination. This rice is a game changer. I like that sweet rice. I've made this dish many times and I'm glad to have finally tried it with coconut rice. I'm happy to say that I'll be pairing these two from now on. The savory and spicy flavors of the chicken pairs well with the sweetness of the fluffy coconut rice. Who knew that spiciness can go well with sweetness? That is it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video where we create a DIY brick oven pizza under $75. See you all in the next one.